Well, if you look at your room in which you are sitting, everything around you is nearly come from forest. Whether it is the chair or the bed on which you are sitting, the cosmetics that you apply, the oil that you actually, the food that is cooked into or whatever you are actually using, all that has come directly or indirectly from the forest. So, forest in fact is very, very important for mankind. When I talk about the things that the forest gave us, the list is endless. Whether it is the bamboo, the fruits, the flowers or when I talk about other things, everything comes from forest. So, forest seems to be the storehouse of all the necessities that the place provides us with. We should be thankful to the forest for providing us with wonderful things, timber, flowers as I said, bamboo and other such things. Okay? Now, when I go forward, the word deforestation comes to my mind and I have already explained it to you that the cutting, clearing of forest is in fact deforestation. And deforestation could be because of industrial growth, it could be because of cultivation requirement, it could be because the need for pasture or the fuel wood. But this process did not start at once. It was a long process which actually led to deforestation in India. And this started if we talk about in India during the British Raj. Now, what were those factors which led to deforestation in India during the colonial rule? The first thing was increase in population. The population increased wildly in India and in Britain at that time, which meant that agriculture production had to be increased, whether it was jute, sugar, wheat, cotton, that is all the cash crops, which were in fact in great demand in Britain had to be grown more and more. When the demand was more of the crops and the production had to be more to actually make the requirement meet, this is how the deforestation started in India because they started clearing the trees, the forest for agricultural use. Well, the English people also considered the forest as unproductive. They thought they were just growing in wilderness and they were not generating any kind of income. So, they started with agriculture there because it was a double benefit for them. The production was meeting the requirements of the people of Britain. Besides, it was generating income to the rulers of India. Next is that the oak forest in Britain suddenly disappeared in Britain. So, there was no timber to meet the needs of the Royal Navy, which meant that the ships which had to be made needed a regular supply of timber. And since the oak forest had disappeared, the forest that had to be made use of or those which had to meet the requirements were of course the Indian forest. And thus the Indian forests were cleared for meeting the needs of the Royal Navy ships. Next is the Britishers started spreading railway network in India. It was not of course for any benefit of the Indians. It is because they wanted trade in India and they also wanted the movement of troops to become easier. 
so that whenever there is a rebellion in any part of India, it would be quicker and easier for the British to move the troops there. Therefore, the railways were considered to be very essential or lifeline of the British Raj in India. And when the railway network expanded in India, definitely the need for timber was felt. Therefore, the Britishers gave all the supply requirement to the contractors. And these contractors started recklessly felling the trees of the forest, which meant deforestation in India. So, you must just understand that it is the requirement of the human beings, whether for fulfilling their hunger or whether to actually see that the railway tracks are made or the ships are to be made, everything we are just dependent on the forest and therefore when the need is so much and the requirement is so much naturally disappearance of forest or the deforestation of forest is to happen and this is exactly what happened in India during the British rule. I talk about the rest of it in the next clipping.